started. Okay, Don sent that the agreement to be over here on uh, the uh, southeast 80th Avenue in Kansas. They're going to be sure you have to forty five thousand. Because like John's, and I, I think you guys saw the email. Uh, John, John said, you know, cat and Portland is going up to 50 percent. Yeah, it's hard time. Right? It really is. Well, that's really. That's right. You're, you're exactly right. You don't know. But they're not going to adjust the ratio. Help, are they? Or probably. Yes. Yeah. No. Probably not. That's what I wanted. Sign this yet, but yet we want to get it going so the yeah, album comes out. We don't even know how long it took to get this far. Yeah, I, I hate to back up now. So, you think the project would be around 150000 I wouldn't think it'd go over that. I mean, I mean, we got some money. What I want to do is whatever our cost is, you know, it'll be next year. I'm sure it's going to be next year. Was use federal funds exchange money. I mean, that way it's not going to Because I didn't budget for it, so I don't, you know, have any budget. Any wiggle room in my budget in the budget right. for that. So, you know, that, that's what <clears> my <throat> idea was. But hopefully it comes in less than that. I mean, so like, state, like Shane said, until you get a bid, who knows? Yeah. I mean, it depends on how hungry a contractor is and, you know, just all, all the variables. And Kansas still willing to help with that? Or? <laughs> We called him, and, and it's been a while since he thought about it, and he kind of played dumb with me. I've had enough board members call me, but I, I think so. We need, we need to get, you know, a bid. You know, exactly yeah, right. It's the top. Yep. Yeah. So do we get the bid, or does the state? No, we do. We, 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 well, we, we do everything. Good. Let's move. Yeah. Okay, so you want to go ahead and get started on the design? Right. Then? Get this slide after yeah. some time after the first. This is only been a year. Well, we talked to them <laughs> uh, at the April meeting, so it's been right at six months. I mean, yeah, since I mean, we started really, talking to the students. We've been talking about discussion. Oh, oh, yes. Right. Yeah. Oh, I've dealt with longer than that. Yeah. yeah. So, what do we have to sign an agreement with? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Then this, we'll get sent back off and the state people sign it and then they'll keep on copying and send them back to us. So the chair? Or no, it's all through yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. I'll make a motion. We uh, enter an agreement with the state of Kansas Department of Transportation to fix the intersection Highway 50 and Stafford Road or 80th, 80th, 80th Avenue. I'll second that. We have a motion and a second to enter into an agreement with. Kansas Department of Transportation to get the road uh, repaired or fixed at the intersection of the Kansas Co op and 80th Avenue. In all the I say I am not in motion to <coughs> doesn't hold well enough well to it, it pots out and it, it doesn't keep us flowing very well. What I would propose is to make elevated ones in the third day. It's just in fact if you guys don't have a good generation. It's just more of an FYI idea so you guys understand what you know. Well since I put that in I think it's the yeah I did it, there, there are, I don't think there's been any yeah I don't think there's been any more wrecks since that there has been so something probably needs to go back in. Mm -hmm. I mean if we cut them back in what we gotta do is go 
borrow a deal from the state and then end up putting a set of bodies back on, which is going to cost us a thousand dollars to replace the bodies. And, and that cold makes it, the cold makes just won't let it add up to it. So I, well, I think we'll, just, we'll, just, we'll try that, put the elevated rumbles like they do on temporary mm -hmm. signage, is what I would like to do with the floor right now and see how that fares. And then I talked to uh, Clayton and Shively of Barry Tractor about getting the pressure here. I'll look forward to the end of the year about pressure up the touch of the last. But I'll uh, take the, the concrete out of the year. And he thought we could probably get it around for 45,000 for what we did the last time. And that was with a uh, separator and a crusher and also a stacker bag magnet that took care of some. No, no so. Then we got to approve a water bridge. <laughs> yeah, well, after 20, you know, after Kirkland Michaels and everything, it's $2,500 for we ever got started yeah. on this. Um, I'm going to need to buy a couple beams. Um, right now, I'll take on this buy a couple 30 footers. I've got two 30 footers. It, it usually takes 13 beams to, to make a 28 foot bridge. I can't see down there and work. As, as wide as the equipment is, we want any less than 20. Right. So we, we have all basically all the materials. We don't have to buy too much of it, but a couple of beams. So. Any guardrails or low banister? Oh, uh, yeah, we'll do guardrails. And the most, most of those guardrails are right where I talking about because uh, they'll run right, mm -hmm. just about right here being tough. That, 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 yeah. that, Um, then I think I'm probably going to have to resize some of that stuff out here. So I'm going to have to get the breaker for the back on the back of it. Or hang on the skis. The, the, the back of it works a little better because it's a little bit better to work in there as much. Um, so we'll get some of those sizes knocked down before we start crushing them. So. And then other than that, I think that's... Something going on with the intersection. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the holes at Maxwell Road and 50 on the south side. It's right up next to the pavement. Okay. It's a state. Okay. We'll, we'll, get, we'll get it for me. Okay. I'll tell the guys when we go through there just, just doing this. Okay. That'd be great. Well, I mean, it's. <laughs> Well, it's our patrons that are, right. I mean, driving it, so. Yeah. And waiting on this day, as, as you can see, is not a good idea. Yeah, I should get you the first piece of input on this other project. <laughs> <laughs> Give us credit. Yeah. 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 So far, so good. So far. Only seven minutes in. I feel one good. I went two minutes on the room, so I'm going to I allowed to ten. Because I knew you would. Oh, jeez. I'm kidding. Oh, my God. This ain't our first meeting, Phil. I make motion to approve the minutes from October 1st. Mm -hmm. Second. Okay, we have a motion second to approve the minutes from October 1st meeting. All in favor say aye. 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 Thanks for your Sorry, Clay. This is a right hand thing. I know. <laughs> That's, I agree with that.
get the, the bound bound page is a, a copy of our 2013 audit report, and this single page is a statistical analysis that we put together each year for the hospital. Really, what it shows is some financial ratios for the prior three years, and then the far right-hand column is an average. It's a database of other life-size hospitals that we work with in the state of Kansas. There's about 40 or so facilities that are in there, and that data is primarily based off the 2012 year. Uh, so just to give you an idea of what some of those are. Uh, and Todd just kind of asked me to, to point out a few things uh, really on, on the hospital specifically as well as where the industry is as a whole and, and kind of how the hospital reimbursement works. Uh, one of the things that I did want to point out in the audit report on, on page four is the, uh, the income statement for the hospital. And what you'll see on here is between 2012 and 2013, the hospital did actually reduce cost by about $200,000. Uh, the number that I intended to write down when, and, and got away from the office before I wrote down was the total cost from 2011. Uh, what I do recall is that that number, between 2011 and 2012, there was a substantial decrease in cost between those two years as well. Uh, I just don't have the exact figure here with me. And so, really what you see then is the, the operating loss stayed between 600 and 650,000 in these two years, uh, which was an improvement over what it was in 2011. The, the issue continues to be volumes. You, know, you see that the revenue declined by more than the expenses did, and, and that's really where the statistical comparison, you can see the very bottom three uh, numbers, the 18 through 20, are looking at some census data. Uh, the acute patient days, that's the, you know, the, the sicker patients that are actually in what you normally consider to be a hospital stay. Uh, you can see in the, in the past three years that's dropped from 254 days down to 79. And then the, the skilled swing bed is a kind of a second tier level of care. Once once the patients have been stabilized, but they're not quite well enough to go home, uh, they can go into that mode of care. And that stayed a little bit more consistent. It dropped from just a shade under 500 days in 2011 down to 450 and about 400. And so what what you wind up with in this situation is your cost has been reduced to a point where you really can't get a whole lot lower. And so you're continuing to have a smaller denominator to divide it by, so the cost per unit uh, keeps going up. And then the, uh, the other challenge that you run into, there's a, a footnote on page 10 that talks about uh, net patient revenue and how your, how your payments are, are set. And uh, in the second to last paragraph there, you note uh, approximately 80% of the hospital's revenue in, in 2013 and about 76% in 2012. So right around that 80% level comes from both Medicare and Medicaid. And the way that uh, the way that the hospital gets paid from those two programs is essentially on a cost basis. Uh, Medicaid doesn't work exactly like that anymore, but it's a, a system that is set to approximate cost. Uh, Medicare is actually set, supposed to be at 101% of cost. However, there's sequestration, a 2% cut on top of that, and, and they don't pay for all costs. So you're, you're really getting paid about somewhere probably in the 90 to 95% of what it actually costs to provide care uh, from the two programs that comprise 80% of, of your patient volume. Uh, the, the other 20% then also includes your uninsured folks who don't have the ability to make payments, so that the, the opportunity to make a, a positive margin is, is fairly limited uh, to Blue Cross or commercial insurance companies that, that you can actually get a little bit of margin from. So uh, that's kind of the, uh, the the dilemma that you're stuck with. And so what, back just briefly to uh, this, this one pager, uh, what you see, the, the other two numbers that I often spend time discussing with the hospital boards are, are numbers four and number five. Uh, that, that number four operating margin you see back in 2011 was about a negative 30%. And you 
been right in the negative 20 percent the last couple of years. What that's looking at is purely the operation of the hospital, with the revenue generated from patient care, and looking at the expenses from patient care. Uh, then that number five, the total margin, that includes all revenue sources. That includes the property tax support as well. Uh, in 2012, uh, it actually includes the, uh, the no fund warrants in, in that number also. So, so really what you see is, is 2013 with the tax support that the hospital received, it was just under 4% uh, loss. So it, it does continue to show that the uh, property tax support is, is critical to maintaining the, the ability of the hospital to continue to, to uh, operate. You know, that, that's really kind of the, the quick snapshot. Uh, the, the one thing I would point out when you look at the at this uh, statistical analysis and comparing 2012 to 2013. Uh, again, the, the client average column is based primarily on 2012. Uh, there was a report issued by Moody's that when they were reviewing hospital data that 2013 was the worst year that there ever has been in, in the hospital world. So what, what you'll see is when we compare our database from 2012 to 2013, I expect all of these to deteriorate. And so it, anywhere where your numbers went down between 12 and 13, I expect the, the peer group to also go down. Uh, just because we did see uh, uh, throughout the state of Kansas, everyone we worked with had a, a really tough year in 2013. And from what we're hearing out there, uh, currently volumes in 2014 continue to stay down. Uh, I think yours were actually up a little bit, uh, at least in the first half of the year compared to the first half last year. Uh, I think it slowed down a little bit uh, since that point in time. And, and this is typically a fairly slow time in the hospital world. Usually the uh, summer and fall months are, are slower than uh, once we hit. December, January, February, March, and we have the kind of flu season that's, that's historically one since this has been out of season. Uh, that's the, uh, the 30,000 foot flyover in, in a few minutes. Uh, anything else, Todd, that you wanted me to touch on or, or anything that I can share with, with the gentleman would help you understand this strange mechanism? Mm -hmm. What do we do in the future to make it continue on track? Uh, in the future, uh, and one of the things that I discussed with the, uh, the board when I was sharing the audit uh, at that point in time is this skilled swing bed program it is really one that, that I think has potential benefit for you. Uh, what that essentially is, is if a, if a patient you know, winds up in more critical care uh, such that they, they don't meet the criteria that they would want to be served at a critical access hospital, but they go and they say they go to uh, Hutch or they go to Pratt or been, but then they've been stabilized, <laughs> excuse me, stabilized, and they're now eligible for skilled swing bed. You have the ability to bring those folks in, and your payments are actually much higher than what those hospitals have received. And typically, uh, you know, what you can see from uh, the length of stay on number 13 here, you tend to keep those folks about 12 to 13 days which is about where the program was designed to be. It's to provide some rehab and some therapy and get them ready to go back home. So I think personally in, in the setting that we're seeing in, in small hospitals, that's, that's where you need to focus and try to get some of those other facilities to when they discharge from the queue to admit to Stafford County Hospital so those folks can come home and finish their care here, relatives don't have to drive there. It, it, it also, uh, you know, you can see the uh, the cost per day, number 17, that, that $2,400. That's roughly what you get paid to provide that level of care per day. Uh, whereas those larger hospitals uh, that are getting paid on a prospective pay system, they're, they're probably getting about $400 a day. So that they would much rather kick and leave anyway, because they, they very well could be losing money on so it, it's just a, kind of a win-win. The -win. uh, patient wins, they get to come home. Your hospital wins because you get some volume in there and keep things going. Kind of larger hospital can win as they free those beds up for other uh, larger cases. That's one of the key ones. Uh, 
uh, outpatient services is still kind of where things are going, physical therapy, uh, things of that nature, at least for many of the small hospitals. The swing bed is still pretty, I mean, it's pretty highly regulated too. It's to who qualifies and who doesn't. Yes, uh, th there is a requirement. Uh, there must be a three days qualifying stay in the hospital. Uh, it's it's really for purposes of, of, of the skilled program. It's it's really uh, Blue Cross does make some payments for it, so you can see some of those patients. But by and large, they tend to be Medicare. Now the uh, you know your intermediate swing bed is really what people tend to think of as, as long term care. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the residential stay. It's paid a little bit differently. It's it's not as uh, not as large of a payment. You're, you're tending to get uh, somewhere around 150 dollars a day, uh, but but it does many times, and it has for years helped cash flow the hospital. Uh, even though the payments aren't huge, it, it basically covers the cost and it provides that payment stream on a normal basis. Where some of the other volume fluctuations you can go from. Two or three acute days in a month to 20 or 30, and it's, it's very difficult to control that cash flow. Kind of hard to recruit for that, though. <laughs> kind of hard to recruit well, patients I, except for word of mouth, like I want to go home and care home. You for know. swing bed? Yeah, for swing bed. Nikki Pretoris, our swing bed coordinator, she goes to the surrounding hospitals and talks yeah. to them. Yeah. And I need to be aware of it. You got a place for yeah. I think, and I think because I'm pointing out that a lot of times she talks to somebody different every time. You know, there's a lot of turnover, and so it's important just to keep going to those places. And, and uh, the university is going to have to keep working out. I'm sorry. I think Pratt is pretty good about you know if they're from here sending them back, and it's the same person there. Um, and she's went to Wichita and Hutch here recently in the last month or two and talked to them and she does that every so often. Yeah, I hear a lot of patients say, well, I'd like to, I'm not quite ready to go home. I'd like to go back to the swing bed for a little while, but they probably don't have a lot of rights themselves to do something that They have more than they think. Yeah, that <laughs> I mean, really, they, they, you can do yeah. whatever you want to do. You can right. go home if you're able. I would make you sign something, but uh, and I didn't realize that when I started working in the hospital. I mean, you can go wherever you want to go. However, sometimes your doctor's going to say, you know, mm -hmm. you're yeah. going to stay, you know, I mean, say if it is your right. It's like you can get your lab work done at Stafford and we can fax the results to your doctor instead of driving to Hutch to your doctor to get the lab work done. Some doctors fight harder for that than others. Because they, they want their own payment. facility. Yeah. <laughs> but it is absolutely when, when it comes time to, to discharge to, to swing bed, the patient has every right to go be discharged and admitted to the swing bed program anywhere they want. Uh, it's absolutely their ability to do that. The, the only, only qualifier there is that they do have to meet the medical necessity. Uh, we do see sometimes the patients say, I'm not quite ready to go home, but from the medical standpoint, they don't qualify for skilled swing anymore. You could still bring them into an immediate bed uh, because it's, really not a, it's a minimal plan of care. It's more of a residential type program. Any I know I've asked this question in the past, but I don't know if you directed me to ask your auditor the last time we were here about the buildings and the land on the financial statement. Mm -hmm. Is when it's, the hospital's actually owned by the county, shouldn't right. that be on the county's financial statement, not the hospital's true financial statement? The way that it works, uh, and, and I forget which county pronouncement, but it, it's essentially because of the way that the hospital is operated. It, it, it does, I think, in one of the footnotes discuss that it is owned by the county and refers to the county. Uh, however, the, the operation, it's a key component to the operation. 
and so it winds up on the financials. It, it's also beneficial to you to have it that way because the Medicare program pays you for the depreciation on the buildings and, and, and the equipment. So it is reflected on, on the hospitals and buildings that way. I've always wondered that I've done that several times. And, yeah. times of, and, I've yeah. about it. and, yeah. and the reason for that is that it's the cost of doing business. Correct. Because yeah, the the, uh, the Medicare program pays you pay, as a critical access hospital <coughs> on a cost basis, and, and what they pay is the, the reasonable cost of providing care to a Medicare beneficiary, and that's regardless of who actually pays that cost. Okay. And so that's why uh, you know oftentimes. Anytime that you can get a hold of a grant, uh, things of that nature, it's those are perfect win scenarios because the grant money comes in and, and pays for expense, it pays for a piece of equipment, uh, and you don't have to offset your cost for that money. But then Medicare pays you for the cost for the depreciation, and you essentially get twice get from the program and from the uh, grant agency. It, it works the same way with the. Uh, tax support. Uh, there's no offset required for that. So the, the operations that that funds and the equipment that that funds, you, you do draw down Medicare dollars on top of that money. I know there's been times, you know, questions. Was, well, I don't understand, you know, they reimbursed 101%. And, but then you, you know, you're getting 85% reimbursement. And I said, it's, it's correct because Medicare does not pay for the TV or the telephone or the ice water at 3 a.m. or whatever. So all those factors are, or those expenses are taken out. Right. But yet we provide them. Right. Yeah. yeah it's kind of hard to put that under TV under patient care. Right. It's a it's a really built by the hour. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll I'll put a coin to pay. <laughs> <laughs> put in yeah, a quarter and get thirty minutes. <laughs> yeah. It's a very odd thing, but the, uh, the the television that you would provide to have in the lobby and, and have people watch TV in the waiting room is okay from a Medicare standpoint, but the one that you got in the patient's room is uh, is not normal. Yep. And uh, it's not so it's, necessary to treat that person. <laughs> It's a very, very weird system. Uh, hasn't been updated since the Medicare program came to play because the regulations actually state patient radios or televisions. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's very true. There, there's many, many costs that are actually necessary to operate the hospital that Medicare won't pay for. Advertising for services is one. Uh, you know, just several of the, the television. Literally. Not going to have somebody in the hospital for 12 days and swing bed and no TV or telephone or anything. So that, that there's plenty of costs and the expenses that are spot on. But while the program says it pays 101 percent, it pays 101 percent of what Medicare deems to be reasonable allowable cost, and not all costs are allowable. <laughs> Anyway, I appreciate the opportunity to, to kind of share some of those things with you. Hopefully that helps understand mm -hmm. uh, the, the things that Todd McKenzie deal with on a day-to-day -day basis to keep things going. As you read through this stuff, if you think of something, let us know. And okay. And to avoid Jason, if I can't figure it out, McKenzie. Overall, then you'd say kind of in the same no major changes really for the last three years, kind of the same place? Or? Yeah, I mean, the, the, the volume has continued to go down. You, you've continued to reduce costs reduce cost where you can. It's, it's, I don't think there's a lot of uh, spots left to go. You're, you've got your staffing down about as far as you can go and still meet all the regulations and be able to have the right staffing in there. So that there's just not a lot of a lot of big places left to go. When, when you look at a hospital, uh, typically what we're seeing is, you know, two-thirds to 70 percent is so labor-intensive that most of it's in, in salary and benefits. And when you get to the bottom layer, you just can't go down anymore there. So uh, it is something that the volume issue is, is kind of critical one to try to get some more patients uh, steered back in there. Increase outpatient, increase
change or some other things happening. We've been talking about it for a long time, and, and the only people that we talked to Wesley, and they came up and told us what they were doing. And, and if you have $5,000 down, $500 a month, then you can <laughs> be part of our organization. Hoping, hoping this is a different deal out here. How's the uh, tonnage fees collections going? Recycling is St. John started. I know they put, put these little containers around Stafford. Um, my question is are we still going to provide the trailer? We said we would because of uh, the country folks. Mm -hmm. yeah. The country, at least yeah. what that's because Maxwell had a concern about that. And I asked Darren and I asked you guys, and that's what you said. So for, that. for and then I was told indirectly we may have to relocate the trailer That's from this pre previous spot because Great Bend Water District needs more water. Can and we I don't know. We put don't it up there at the fairgrounds? I don't know. Yeah. It's a good place to go. We would go to the fair. Or down south by the powerhouse where, yeah. you know, yeah. they, Put those dumpsters before, but I I I just caught a brief. Where's it at now? It's, it's uh, across the street. Well, right next door to the Great Bend Water Big Bend. Big Bend. Oh, Big Water Bend. District yeah. Office. Okay. And Stars has their aluminum trailer collection. So I didn't know if we were. Going. Do away with. Well, earlier you had said earlier we said we would keep it. Yeah. yeah. Because I said Max told us for us to do that. Yeah. For you know, country. Right. I suppose if you fill your container up at home, you can still want it. So you don't recycle. Can you imagine the first time I would go to buy recycle and how you would be? I do. What is this great end development? We don't know what to that. No.
How's your arm? Good. Well, I think it's off on. Is it better? I have a big blister right here. Oh, from the plant, they wrap the blister. I tried to get him to pop it, but it cast out and it wouldn't. Oh, it's so much is down. I think it's still there. Infected. I keep trying to pop it. Why would you know? <laughs> 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 Put a little. Did you play rewrap it? Well, he did such a good job the other day.